we're good to go. Okay. Then we will call the meeting to order at 5.30. Uh, thank you all, first of all, for either braving the cold or Zooming. We appreciate it. Wendy, are there any public appearances or non-agenda items? Not that I know of. Anything in the building? Nope. Nope. Okay. okay. Then I will need a motion, please, to approve the December 2023 draft minutes. I will I'll so make move. A motion. Thank you, John. Any changes or clarifications to it? If not, may I will call the vote. All in favor of approving the December 2023 draft minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. We will go to the financial report for October 2023, the register and the overview, and I will make a motion to approve of it. And Wendy, it's all yours. Excellent. All right. So you'll notice that it was a free pay period month in October. So those counts look a little bit higher. Um, as I've said before, we just have to hit 26 pay periods by the end of the year, and we are on track to do that. Um, you'll notice in account 240, um, a rather large payment to control works. This was the air handler when it stopped working um, in September. This is the first of two large payments that we'll be making to them. Uh, this is what we talked last month about um, some overspending of a couple of accounts and this is one of them and this is what um, contributed to it. Um, so, so we needed a new Jace. This is not the payment for the Jace. This is for everything that went along with it, the, the labor and all the, all the other controller parts. So that was significant. We also, you'll see under that um, book drop update from rural masonry, this was cutting the hole in the side of the building for the um, existing book drop larger to fit the new sorter. So that was a little bit um, in that account as well. Um, let's see. Oh, there was one other one I wanted to mention and it is an account 355 zebra printers. Um, just because nobody knows what that means. Um, they are the, the printers that we use to print our spine labels for, for all of our books. Um, we are experiencing, we, we switched over to the Zebra printer probably three or four years ago because we were having significant fading of all the spine labels and we're having to replace them. Um, so these don't fade like the old ones do. Uh, because we had money in this account at the end of the year, we went ahead and got two more so that we can um, speed up the process of relabeling. Um, we end up with full books of cards in the back room with labels that can barely be read that need to be updated. So with having two more of these printers, we can uh, have that work done out of the desks, um, at all the desks instead of just in adult services. So, so that should speed that up a little bit. Other than that, everything seemed pretty normal to me. Um, yeah. Any questions? Anything she can clarify? Okay, then I will call a vote. All in favor of approving the financial register and overview, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. And can I interject something before we move on? I just wanted to give you guys an update. We talked about the memos we were doing at the last meeting um, to deal with some of the accounts that were overspent. There were a couple of changes since then I just wanted to update you on. Um, the one for the shelvers went through no problem and one for 350, which was repair and maintenance supplies went through no problem. Um, the one for 240 with the Jace and the, the control works um, bills, we changed that. Um, I was trying to use um, unexpected interest income to cover that, but Misty said that would need to go to the council um, because it's a change of revenue stream. And so I covered that with uh, extra funds from 110, which is salaries and wages instead. Um, so that went through okay. We ended up eliminating the one for 387, which is collections. Um, so we had a very generous donation of $2,500 to increase our large print collection. Um, and I mistakenly thought that we could just run that through the regular account. Misty would rather that go through the grants account. So we're just retroactively moving the donation and then $2,500 worth of purchases from Ingram um, that were spent on large print. So it's taking that kind of out of the, the need to, to fix it at all. 
Um, and we will continue to do that going forward if that happens again. I just wanted to end signed off on um, the memo that we needed to get done, um, but I promised that I would update everybody on that, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving along, we have any unfinished business? Nothing? And next we have new business, approve the ILS purchase order. Wendy? Let's have a motion. I'll make a motion oh. to approve the ILS purchase order. Thanks, Thank Anne. Uh, so this is the annual payment that we make to South Central for all of the services that we get from them. Um, this is by far, I think, the biggest payment we make in a year, um, but it's also the biggest, um, I guess, conglomeration of, of services we get. So this covers LinkCat. Um, so the patron database and the uh, material database. So this is where we keep track of everything that we own and who has it um, and all our patrons. Um, they run all of the computers. All of our computers are on their network. Um, so they run a network for us. So that includes switches and, and all sorts of services on their end and in our building. Um, it includes part of our delivery fee. Part of our delivery fee is covered by the county, but part of it is through South Central. Um, get it is the acquisition system that we use to track what we're ordering and if we've received it. Um, and then continuing education. Um, they do a lot of continuing education courses and we've gotten some grants from them. Um, so there's, there's some resources there. And then um, when we are replacing carpet or furniture or building the new conference room that we're going to do, we use Deb Hafner's services. She does um, kind of interior design work for them. So so we get a lot out of this payment, but it is a really big one. So I just want to make sure everybody knows what it's for. Wendy, I have a question. Is this under 290? Yes. Okay. Anything else Wendy can clarify? Then all in favor of approving the South Central Library System invoice, which is the purchase order, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We are back to the board authorizing the president to approve the DPI annual report. I move approval. Thank you. Uh, we don't do this every year, but I think we're going to start. So this is um, essentially kind of dealing with the time crunch issue that we have every year with the DPI report. So it is due by the end of February, but we tend to meet mid-month. Um, and so trying to get it done can be really challenging because I'm dependent on numbers that come in from the finance department um, and from other sources. And sometimes those things get hung up. So this is just um, allowing Toby to, to approve it. We'll get it submitted. Um, Toby is the only one that signs it. Um, and then we will bring it to you as an informational piece um, in March. So you'll still see it. It won't change anything. Um, it just allows us to get the process going. Wendy, when will that be coming through to me? Um, they have not opened it yet. I'm hoping they're going to open it next week. So I would say I need to get it into... South Central has to go through it and approve it, um, fact check it basically, and they have to do that. I have to get it to them by the 16th. So I would say probably the week of our next board meeting, so it's going to be really close, which is always why I'm kind of iffy about doing this, but I think it's it's smarter to do it this way. So probably okay. the third week of February. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Just want to make sure I'll be around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And a question uh, also. Have a motion to Wait. approve of it. Toby, I have a question. Any questions or comments on it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what kind of things are in the DPI annual report? So this is the big one that you've seen every year um, that, that talks about all of our statistics. Okay. Um, so I usually talk about having a pretty report and then a boring report. And this is a boring report um, that I spend probably three weeks working on. Um, so it's going to be all of our um, use statistics, but also our revenue and expenditure. Um, this is where we say who all of you are, that you're on our board. We say how many staff we have. Um, we, and then at the end, we say that we feel like we've gotten um, good services from our system. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Anne. Anyone else? All in favor then, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. President report. I have nothing except that it's cold out and I'm glad to hear that the heat is still working in the building. Um, moving on to library director report. No, part of my report is that the heat is still working in the building. Um, <laughs> we, it, it's taken Kevin a lot of time. He's having to babysit it a lot and restart a lot of things. Um, I think the first morning that it was really bitterly cold, one chiller was working. We're supposed to be eight. We haven't had eight in a long time, but we've had more than one. So he's been, been watching it. Seems to be doing okay. Um, we do have some space heaters around. There were a couple of places, I think because of the number of windows in the rooms that got really cold. Um, when we were closed, um, but but it seems to be doing okay. Um, so that's the chiller update. Um, I just want to give you a quick update on on weather closures. Um, we have a new policy in place with the city this year for inclement weather closures. So Chad Brecklin, as the city administrator, is now determining when we're closing all city buildings at the same time. That's not to say that we couldn't decide to do to close um, on an evening or a weekend because they're not open then. So we still have some um, say so what happened this time. So we were closed on Tuesday. That decision came down Monday afternoon from Chad. Um, and then we were closed Friday and Saturday. That decision to close Friday came down fr uh, Thursday afternoon from Chad. Um, it was relayed to me by Adam Sayre, who's the deputy city administrator. I called him right back and said, that if Friday is out, I think Saturday probably should be too. I don't think we can get cleaned up um, in time to have people in the building or to get staff into the building. Um, and he agreed with that. So we closed for those days. Um, in hindsight, I wish I would have emailed you each time that happened and I will in the future. Um, it's always a little bit crazy when we're closing unexpectedly. We've got locks to deal with and and extending holds and getting signs up and getting staff all arranged and whatnot. So, but um, I will put that on my to-do list when we close in the future to let you know that it's happening before it happens. Um, and now that I've said that, we probably won't close for weather for another three years. <laughs> kind of how that goes. Uh, I ask a question about that. Yeah, yeah. Do the hourly staff lose pay when the building closes for weather? So if you're um, a library assistant three or above, you are you can work from home if you want to, or you can use accrued time. Um, if you are below that on the pay scale, then your job is considered public service. And so we typically don't do a work from home. You can make up the hours or you can use accrued time off. Um, so you don't um, necessarily lose pay. Shelvers are a different situation because they only work 10 hours a week. They're typically able to make it up. Um, and we are able to be pretty flexible about making it up within the, the current pay period or the next pay period because they're all 10 or 20 hour employees. Is there sufficient work for everyone to do from home? Yes. Okay. For the positions that we allow it for, yes. That's, that's essentially what we're looking for is a position that has things that they can do from home. Okay. So all of the staff were good with the decision and there was no... I think it's certainly no um, there. not convenient for some of the um, LA1s and LA2s to make up the time uh, if they don't want to use time off. It's sort of nice that this happened, happened in January because everybody's got a pretty big bank of time off for the year. Um, I think there's an inconvenience there, but there are certainly options. We try to be as flexible as we can. Okay, thanks. And Wendy, there's really no option for you to override the city when they decide to close, correct? No, I think there's room for discussion for sure. Okay. Uh, the the when we closed on Tuesday, Chad Chad got most of the department heads together on Monday to talk about what our options were and what we had going on. So I don't feel like I'm not I don't have input. I frankly prefer this system to what we did before, which was kind of everybody did their own thing and nobody knew what was happening everywhere. So I think this is an improvement. Yeah, this sounds good because then you can't get any flack if everybody else in the city is closed. Right. It's not coming back to you. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Good. Well, and, so, and the senior certainly. center and I really made a point of, you know, if, we're, if our doors are open, we're really encouraging people to go out and drive in really terrible conditions. 
um, which I think is not necessarily the same things that they're thinking about at City Hall. So I think it's good to have all of us at the table to, to talk about. Okay, thank you. Um, um, let's see what else I have. Sorter update. The sorter is fantastic from the staff side. We are still really struggling with it from the patron side. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I'm not sure that people are smart enough to follow the one line instruction one item at a time. Um, we're having people just stuff things in it and walk away and then and then it's not doing what it should be doing, which is purging that. Um, so we are working with Envisionware um, to, to make some changes on our end to try to improve it. But I'm currently real disappointed in people's ability to read one line of instructions. <laughs> um, so here's hoping everybody's gonna get used to it. This is just a transition period and it will get better. Um, when, how, that, how has that yeah. worked with the um, the fact that it sticks out so far? You were concerned with that? Has anybody That's hit it? That's been fine. Okay. That has not been a problem at all. Knock on wood. Um, I thought that was that was our biggest problem, and it absolutely is not. We've got that thing flashed with the signs one at a time, and it's hard. Um, we also had some struggles early on with um, newspaper delivery people putting newspapers into the store, which they've done in the past, and it's fine because that was a for all purposes, it's kind of a dumb sorter. But this one knows something's going on, and so it doesn't like it. So there are adjustments to be made. It is still worth having. We still love it on the staff side. It's great on that side. We're just The adjustment is um, harder than I think we expected. Thank you. Yeah. Um, solar update. So I just wanted to run this past you. So as we all know, the solar array has not worked since early summer. Um, and the company that made the inverters that that broke has has been asked to not do business in the U.S. anymore. Uh, we've been working with Arch Electric. Uh, there was a lawsuit, class action suit that we were a part of. Um, I think we got twelve thousand less than twelve thousand dollars back, um, which is certainly. I think currently we have eighteen thousand dollars across the city of equipment that needs to be replaced. Um, so so the. Uh, the sustainability person at the city is asking about replacing the inverter. So what, what they're offering is two inverters to, that will take the load of the three that we've had. Different brand. Um, Arch Electric would have to, I think, rewire, re-rack the array. Um, they're asking how much we're willing to put, how, how much money we're willing to put into it this year to get it up and running. And I'm real torn about it because I feel like we've put gobs of money into this already, but also I don't want to have a solar array that doesn't do anything. Um, I think if the payment that we got for the lawsuit was 12000 and we have two-thirds of the equipment that we should probably be entitled to 8000 and nobody has said anything about that to me. Um, that was sort of left out of the conversation, and I'm going to bring that up. Um, I think we can probably stand to put... Six or seven thousand dollars into it to get this done and get it running. I'm going to be real angry if it doesn't work out. You know, this is not this has not been what we were sold for a long time, which is frustrating, I guess. Um, but also, I don't think we can have a solar array that's not doing anything. So I just wanted to run it past you and see if you felt like putting six or seven thousand dollars into it this year out of account two ninety, which we. You know, that is account that's worked on by others. We don't budget it specifically because it's four things that come up. I'd like to think nothing else will come up and then it'll be fine. But as we saw this year, you know, those air handler problems were not expected um, and were quite expensive. We do have plenty of fund balance to cover things at the end of the year or although I, now that we've had to do those memos, I'm not sure that it would work that way. I think we could work it out at the end of the year if, it, if we have difficulties. Um, but I just thought I should run it past you before we I make any decisions and tell them what we want to do. Does anybody have opinions? Wendy, how much money do we save a month when they are working? There is no way to tell because we've when we first installed them in 2018, I would say our bill went down probably a thousand dollars a month, but it has crept back up, and I don't know if that's because the cost of electricity has changed because the they're not working efficiently. There, there is no way to accurately know, which I think is one of the really big downsides of solar is that people can sell it to you with all kinds of numbers attached, but you can't verify any of it. Hmm. 
Do we get any other sort of incentives? Uh, I don't know, maybe like from the library systems or something like that for having green energy? No, we get to brag about it. Okay. And we do have geothermal too, so I feel like it's sort of like, you know, the two things that you put into a building. So I'm when I have been real anti putting money into this for a while. And I'm trying to get over that because I think we need to try to, we need to try to get it working. If, you know, what, what the sustainability person will say is that we save a thousand dollars a month. And so it's $12,000 a year. So if we just put 12,000 in now, we'll just make it back. But I don't, it is not that cut and dried in my eyes or in Kevin's eyes. Wendy, we also don't know how much money we're going to be spending on these space heaters, correct? Those are all done and paid for, so... Right, but we don't know how high our electric bill will be right. as a result of right. those space heaters. Right. I think we only have four or five going right now, so I don't think it'll be tremendous. I will tell you that when we moved into this house that we're in, in the lower level, we even though there was supposed to be heat and there are heat vents... Um, we wound up getting space heaters and our electric bill in a very small area with two space heaters went up $600 a month. So oh, I do, man. I do have concerns with electric space heaters and That's fair. do we need to save our money at this point in case if the chiller goes, we're only in January. So that's yeah. just a thought. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good thought. Maybe we need to wait until we've got the chiller installed. I'm fine with that. If everybody else feels that way, that's fine. that's absolutely fine. Makes sense. Um, makes sense. I'm going to put people so, on the spot. Why don't we get some opinions? Ann, what's your I thought think, on this? Yeah, I think it or makes Jim, sense. Someone in, that's there? <laughs> it must be a delay. Yeah. Uh, I think it makes sense to wait to see what our expenses are going to be in the next couple of months because the amount of sun we're going to get anyway, <laughs> even if it's fixed right away, is going to be negligible. Mm -hmm. So I think our savings won't be as great as if we were making this decision in June. So I agree. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then let me move into the... Um, replacement chiller update. We had a construction meeting um, last week and it went very well. Um, very happy with everybody that's working on the project. Everybody seems to be um, kind of on the same page with how this is going to happen. The ship date currently for the, sh for the chiller is uh, March 1st. So they're saying maybe seven days to get it here. Um, and so we're kind of building a calendar around that. So I believe for several weeks in March, we will be um, in the process of installing. The hope is that we don't have to close. We don't have any interruption to service. I think we'll have to close down the back half of the garage um, so that they can unload the chiller there um, and wait and, and stage it there before they take it down into the building. Um, they'll also have to take out the old one and need space for that. Um, and then the, the company that's putting it in will be park, parking their vehicles back there um, instead of unloading job boxes, they're just gonna work out of their vehicles. Um, so so hopefully by the end of March, we're up and running with a new one. Um, the Strand is the consultant that is kind of managing the project for us. And I was very impressed with his um, concerns were about getting like the electrical run before and the IT needs run before we put in the actual chiller so that we're not in a situation where we have a chiller, but we can't get it up and running. Um, so I was impressed with that. He was asking very specific questions about um, if what, what would be the situation if we needed to close uh, because we can't get it up and running and it's too hot or too cold. Um, and so I told him if we had to close, we would. We would prefer not to, but if we had to, we could. Um, and he seemed relieved by that. So I'm guessing that's not how it's worked at other libraries. So um, I will keep you posted as I learn more about that. But so far, it seems things, things seem to be going really well with it. Um... Oh, and then end of year stats. I was just going to talk about the, we never talk about the statistics that we post every month, um, but we we turned out uh, circulation wise, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly right. almost where we were last year. So not, not an increase, but not a decrease. Um, and that was sort of interesting to me. Um, programs are up. Um, and I think that's probably because we weren't open the first couple of months of um, 22, I believe. So is that correct? So, so a little bit up, but not, Anything to anything significant? 
And that is all for my report. Any questions for me? I do. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I have questions. Um, can you, do you re recall how our year to date checkouts, because they were up over 22, but how do they relate to before the pandemic? So, like in 1819? Sure. I think in 2019, we were uh, a little bit higher than this, where we may be at two. Mm, I don't know if I can pull that number out of my head. I think I would have to go back and look at it. Okay. I was just, I was just curious. Uh, Tim and Phil and I were talking about this the other day, looking at what we were before, before the pandemic. And I'm we're at three. So we're at three Oh six with the combination of checkout and renewal. And I want to say we were a little bit higher than that in 2019, but I don't know that for sure. Okay. Um, Tim might be able to pull that up. Um, I'm gonna Sorry to put you on the spot. No, I'm going to check. I'm not. When did you checkouts include electronic checkouts? Like um, those Lundy? show up. Those show up further down. Um, overdrive checkouts shows up further down in the report. I'm just checking quick to see if I can pull it up like off the city's website. I'm not connected to get into. Oh, um, you're not. We can send this out as an email if that would work. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. I want to say we were a little bit higher in 19, but I don't want to, but I don't want to make up a number. <laughs> we will send out an email. Um, one other thing that I should mention. So we had talked last year or last month about if there was a possibility of reformatting the finance report. Mm -hmm. And Tim and I have messed around with it. And without making it an additional page, I don't know that there is. Um, what I thought might be a better solution, and we used to do this before the pandemic and got out of the habit, um, is to print it out on 11 by 17 paper for anybody that's coming in for a meeting. Um, it is much easier to see on 11 by 17 than it is when it's formatted for eight and a half by 11. I don't know if that is an acceptable substitution. Well, I was the one who asked about it. And for me, that just wouldn't help. So don't do it on my account. But if everybody else wants it, that's, you know, obviously we'll do that. Okay. okay. Do people want her to print it out? No. No. I do not need to print out. Neither do I. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's nice, but not that helpful. Anne likes it. You know, Doesn't I just you? I like it, but I was thinking that if you instead gave us the um, instead of doing it as a PDF, if you did it as an Excel spreadsheet, you can hide the columns, and then you can see everything really, you know, close. Yeah. I, I think when okay, we'll I take another look at, at it. Uh, I think we looked at hiding the columns, but then when we did that, I think what the problem was is we got to a point where, oh, what was it? What was it, Wendy, where, where we got to a point where we couldn't see, like, uh, do you remember? Where we couldn't see some of the information that we wanted to? Yeah. Like, we needed to see the whole the whole year so we can compare the months or something like that. And if we. Right. It only helps for part of the year. Yeah. Um, because I'll, by the time you get to the end of the year, you, you got them all. Um, the other. And I think it is important to be able to track it. The other thing. Throughout the year to the total. Yeah. The other thing we ran into is if we're hiding the columns, it's going to need to be at least a two page document um, because you're hiding the information down below as well. So mm -hmm. the, the revenue, the year to date, the. Mm -hmm the fund balance and that information will all be hidden as well. So you can hide the whole column, but you can't hide Partial just column. part of the top oh, and right. then the bottom. That's right. what it was. So I, I think we were running into that where we were hiding information yeah. we wanted to be able to see unless we make it a couple pages, which we can if that's what you want to do. But Right. Right. Yeah. It's fine. I'm happy. I'm happy with the PDF. It's just... Nice. <laughs> I'm always just very nervous of sending it out as an Excel file because then people can mess with it. And to have that out in the world. 
Makes me they, nervous. Yeah, you can, they can only mess with it if you make them editors. Right. Not if you make them just see it. If you can, pro you can protect okay. it. Protect it. You can protect yeah. the worksheet. Yeah. All right, Tim. Tim, let's figure that out. Yeah, we'll take a peek at Next it week. and see what we can do. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, that's everything for me. Committee reports, strategic planning. We are starting a new one, but it's not going anywhere yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, facilities. I think I've told you everything I know already. <laughs> and personnel. We are fully staffed. Yay. <laughs> Two months in a row. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always good news. And the next board meeting will be February 21st at 530. So I need a motion to adjourn, please. I move to adjourn. Thank you, Jim. All in favor of adjourning and sitting by the fireplace and staying warm, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes, and it is, I can't read it, 6.01 p.m. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. Excellent. And thank Wendy, you. can you hang around?